if you're doing electrical work in your home, you need a voltage tester so you can safely identify live wires. Touching a live wire hurts a lot. Don't ask me how I know that. And shorting a live wire can cause sparks that could cause a fire. When you're doing electrical work around your home, there's some common projects where you need to test whether a wire, an outlet, or a switch is live. This is the Sperry ET6102 voltage tester, and it costs about $7. Now, I think it'll work for almost all the common projects that homeowners like you and I tackle. So let's see how it is going to help us identify live wires in those common projects. It's Dave from Upgrade Your Home DIY, and probably the most common situation is testing an outlet to see if it's live before you do any work on it. The Sperry ET6102 has two probes that easily fit into the hot and neutral slots on an outlet. If it lights up, you know the outlet is live. You don't work on the outlet until you've turned off the breaker and the tester does not light up when you test the outlet. It has clips you fit the probes into to put it at the correct spacing for a typical outlet. This makes it easy to use with tamper-resistant outlets that are becoming more common and even required in some areas. A tamper-resistant outlet requires both blades of the plug to go in at the same time, keeping it safe for little fingers or utensils. Because the two probes are lined up when you have them in the clips, it makes it easy to test a tamper-resistant outlet. If you're doing more than just replacing the outlet, you're doing more work on the wires in that box, you may need to figure out which of the individual wires coming into the box is that live wire. Once you know the outlet does not have power, you can remove it and now figure out which wire is the live wire. Now there's only one cable coming into the box, it's easy. But when you have multiple wires, it is more involved. Again, make sure the breaker is off and there is no power coming to the outlet before you remove the outlet and remove the wires from the outlet. Turn the breaker back on. There is now a live wire, so be careful. Here's where the probes on the Sperry ET6102 give you more flexibility. Disconnect the probes from the clips. Hold one probe on a ground wire or the metal of a grounded metal box. Touch the other probe to each of the black wires. One will light up as live and the others will not. Turn off the breaker. Label the live wire. Now you can work on the project knowing which wire is the live wire. Another common situation is testing which wire coming to a light switch is the live wire. A simple light switch has two black wires connected to it. One carries the power from the circuit, the live wire, and the other carries the power to the light when the switch is on. Since both are black wires, it isn't obvious which is the live wire. You can disconnect the two probes to test which wire is live. With the light switch in the off position, hold one probe to the ground screw on the light switch, ground wire, or the metal box if it's properly grounded. Then touch the other probe to each of the terminal screws. One screw will light up and one will not. The one that lights up is the live wire. You may not see a wire under one of the terminal screws as you see in this switch. That's because they used backstabbing or speed wiring where the wire gets inserted in a hole in the back of the switch. The terminal screw will still be connected to the wire so it still works for testing. On this switch they used speed wiring and have another wire connected to the terminal screw for the live wire at the bottom. Turn off the breaker. Test that both screws now do not light up. Then you can unscrew the light switch, remove it from the box, and mark the live wire. Then you can work on the switch. Now if this is a switch that's in a multi-gang box with other switches or outlets, make sure you test every switch or outlet to make sure the power is off. It is not uncommon that a multi-gang box will have multiple power sources coming to it and before you work on any device in that box make sure all of the live wires have been shut off at the breaker. Now three-way or four-way switches are much more complex in their wiring and really the only way to be able to detect the live wire when, you, when you're dealing with three-way or four-way switches is to actually make sure that the power is off to all of the switches, take them out of the boxes, disconnect all the wires, turn the breaker back on, 
and then individually test every single wire. It's a lot more work and more complex, but it's really the only way to handle these three-way or four-way switches. If you have to do some work in a junction box, that's where this tester can be very valuable. A junction box has two or more wires coming in. One of them is a live wire that is feeding the others. Since there is no outlet or switch, you have to test the wires themselves. If you're not comfortable with this, hire a qualified electrician to do the work. Turn off the breaker that feeds this junction box. If you don't know which breaker that is, you'll have to figure out which breaker needs to be turned off. This has to be done with power flowing to the box, so take more caution. Remove the cover and move the black wires slightly out of the box so that you have a way to touch one probe to the black wires and one to the ground wire or box. Unscrew the wire nut for the black wires. Touch one probe to the ground wires or grounded box. Touch the other probe to the black wires. If the tester lights up, the breaker for this box has not been shut off. Keep trying breakers until the tester does not light up. If you see two groups of black wires in a junction box, it is likely that there are two circuits, live circuits coming into that junction box. So make sure that you test and turn off the breaker for both, or if there are more, all of the circuits coming into that junction box before you do any work in that junction box. Testing if power is off to a, the wires in a junction box is even easier if you've used WAGO connectors instead of the typical wire nuts. Every WAGO connector has one slot that is open on the back for testing. The probes of the Sperry ET6102 can fit in this wall, and you can see if the box has live power going to it without having to expose the wires. If you're not familiar with WAGO connectors as an alternative to wire nuts, I think you should check them out. They come in two, three, five slot versions and the new straight through version. The levers are easy to use and they're a great solution when you have multiple wires coming into either a junction box or an outlet box. I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to get a multi-pack that contains all of the different variations. I found them really valuable and they're a great addition to my electrical pail. Once you have confirmed that the power is not running to this box, untwist the black wires or remove each wire from the WAGO connector. You need to figure out which of these wires is the live one. Separate the wires from each other so you can test each one. Turn the breaker back on to this box. Know that one of these wires is now live, so take care when doing this. Test each wire one at a time, grounding one probe and touching the other probe to one wire. One wire should light up and the rest should not. The wire that lights up is the live wire. Turn off the breaker and mark the live wire before working in the box. Another good feature is that this tester has a clip on the back, so you can clip it to your pocket, or as I do, to a pocket on my electrical pail. If you're now convinced that you want the Sperry ET6102 tester for yourself, just use the link in the description down below and you'll be able to get it from Amazon and have it delivered probably within a couple of days. So that covers how to identify a live wire in most of the common electrical projects that you and I as homeowners will do. This Sperry ET6102 tester I think is more versatile and certainly less expensive than a lot of other options that you see for testing voltage. Now there are situations where you will need more than testing for live wires in an outlet, switch, or junction box. An outlet tester will detect any wiring problems in an outlet. A non-contact voltage tester can detect live wires without an outlet, switch, or junction box. And a multimeter will measure the voltage on a wire or in an outlet. So all three of those options are really options when you're doing more complex projects than the ones that I've talked about in this video. And if you are tackling those more complex projects, certainly make sure that you pick up or look at some of the other testing equipment. Or again, if you're uncomfortable with any of this, please hire a licensed certified electrician to do electrical work in your home. Any of the videos that I create or other creators publish are for people who are comfortable 
taking this information as a guideline and making sure that they're following all the codes in their area. If you're unsure in any way, please make sure you hire a professional. So what do you think? Are there common home projects where this Sperry ET6102 voltage tester won't work to be able to detect live wires for you? Well, if you can think of some, please put them in the comments down below so that everybody knows what those projects are and what they should do instead. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button down below. What that does is it helps other DIYers, homeowners like you and I, who are doing electrical work in our homes to find this video and to be safe in finding those live wires. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I post new videos. Thanks again for watching.